Welcome to the Planning for Life podcast with certified financial planner professional Russell Jacobs and financial life advisor Carl Coolidge. Carl and Russell will share creative strategies and ideas for overcoming challenges in your personal and financial life. Inevitably, life happens, and we will empower you to reach your destination. Thanks for joining us. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to episode number five. Now, this is part one of a two-part series that Carl and I are going to do on their secure process. As we had talked about in uh, one of our last process or our podcast, the secure process is an acronym. And so Carl's going to spend some time walking through what each of those letters mean. And today we're going to talk about the SEC of the secure, which is the URE, which will be podcast part two. So Carl, welcome to the show. Glad to be here, Matt. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing well, and I hope you are doing well, too. So let's break this down. So if you don't mind, could you just go through the whole acronym, and then let's dive into the S, E, and C. Sure. Again, it's a the Secure Retirement Plan process, which is a trademark process we have for really organizing, running, making sure your retirement plan is run in the most efficient manner. So... The acronym stands for the S is study your plan. The E is exploring your plan. C, compelling you to action. The U is understanding all the different dynamics of your plan. R is retain, which related to your employees and making sure you have a good plan for keeping your employees happy. And the E is evaluate which as with anything in most businesses, you have to constantly evaluate and make sure you're doing the best thing you can and you're on the cutting edge of what needs to happen to keep your plan in compliance and also keep it in the top quartile. Okay. This process uh, came out of your experience with working with the 401k world. also came out of the advanced designation that you got, which is the AIF. What, What does that stand for again? The AIF is Accredited Investment Fiduciary, and then I also have the CKP, which is Certified 401k Professional, which obviously are both qualified plan, industry-specific designations. Good. So not only is this catchy, and it makes sense because I think people do want to feel secure, especially in in what they're doing for saving for retirement, uh, but this also uh, is just built off of your education and experience. So let's dive into the S, and then we'll do the E and the C, and then we'll wrap up today's podcast. And the next podcast, podcast number, I don't know what it'll be, six or seven with you guys will be the second part of the secure. Okay, great. Well, getting into the S, as I mentioned, that's study. And so really what we're after is looking at the needs of your organization as well as some of the details on your existing plan. So in this scenario, we're assuming that you would have an existing plan as an employer or more business. And really we want to identify what is important to you. What do you really want from your retirement plan? And that answer is different for a lot of people. Do you want to maximize contributions for you as the owner You want the lowest cost option available, which may sound funny because most people do, but that's one of the things that that you can look at. Do you want to provide education for your employees? Is that important to you? Do you want to make sure that everyone that works for you is on track and that they are actually going to be able to retire? You know, we just really want to understand what your thought process is for the plan because that will lay the groundwork for how you run your plan going forward, and we can help you with all of the things you need to, to deal with on a daily basis related to it, but we want to have the overriding theme of what you're hoping to accomplish with your plan. And part of the next step in the S is really analyzing your current data. So we see when we've looked, and obviously we have a lot of experience looking at a lot of different types of qualified plans, And just as a side note, you'll hear me refer to retirement plan or qualified plan. The reason I say it that way is because not all plans are 401ks. There's also 403bs, 457s, 401as. So there's a lot of different versions, but they all are considered qualified plans or defined contribution plans. So you'll hear me refer to it in usually that manner. 
But when we analyze this data, we see a lot of these plans that have bad structure. So that doesn't mean that you have a bad plan. It just means maybe you're not up to date on what is the best way to solve the problem that you're having. So for example, you may be getting a lot of refunds on your highly compensated employees. Well, or you as the owner, there's ways to deal with that very easily. It just becomes a plan structure conversation. And then you have to look how that will affect the other pieces of your plan. It could be that you need to add a profit profit sharing component. A lot of people will just have the 401k per portion or a matching portion, but they don't look at profit sharing. And there's really different pieces on how you can maximize your plan. Again, it goes back to my first question, which is what is important to you? What do you want to accomplish? Just a few things like that that we really look at to analyze and see where can we improve your plan just from a structural standpoint. We're not even getting into investments or fees or any of those things yet. It's just simply saying, how can we make your plan run more efficiently and maximize it for whatever is important to you? And then really the last part of the study portion of the acronym is reviewing your existing plan in even more detail. So we're really getting under the hood at that point to determine all of your fees that you're paying, both that are seen and unseen, because as, as a buzzword in the industry, there's a lot of expenses that no one sees or understands that they're paying. So we help you un uncover that. We then dig into pieces of participant data. So we're looking at, okay, what, how many of your employees are deferring? What is their average deferral rate? Is your level of deferrals actually putting people on track for retirement? What is that measurement to determine if they're on track for retirement? So we're asking a lot of these questions that you may have not have heard before or thought of, because as we've looked in the industry and as data has come down from the Department of Labor, the focus is not, is everyone deferring in your plan, which is fantastic. It's, are they actually deferring enough to be on track to retire? And retirement can mean, obviously, different things for different people, but that's the goal of what you want to accomplish. So we're really just trying to determine everything associated with your plan. So then we can have a fully educated conversation with you. And then after we truly understand what those goals are and really what your needs are, then we move into the E of the process, which stands for explore. And when we explore the plan, we're looking for opportunities to improve that plan structure that I'm referenced in the study step. So really we looked at analyzing your current plan to see what the structure was. Now we're going to say, okay, we reviewed that. Are there things that we can do now to fix or improve or whatever the case may be on your existing plan? So that's instituting a safe Harbor plan. Are you familiar with what that is, Matt? I, I'm not familiar with what a safe harbor plan is. Well, that gives you the Department of Labor determined that you can have certain safe harbors to your plan, which can allow, in a nutshell, highly compensated employees or really anyone in the plan to be able to contribute as much as they want up to the limit without the other employees affecting how much they can defer. So it allows someone to put in the maximum, which is $18,500 this year, if you're under age 50, whereas you might have a, another worker who's only going to put in $2,000. Well, if you don't have a safe harbor, you can have some testing issues that may not allow those higher compensated employees to put in the maximum amount. So it's important to, to look at that. You know, we also are thinking things with structure. Do you need to implement this profit sharing component? Or if you already have it in place, are you maximizing it to the best you can? Uh, does a cash balance plan present an opportunity, which is, again, a higher level of a, re a qualified plan, and it really moves into more of a defined benefit? So think of more of moving into like a pension type concept. 
And that's just an idea of things we're trying to uncover so we can get the structure right. And you'll see I'm spending a lot of time on that because it's so important to make sure that you have that in good order. Then we're also digging into the existing plan provider or vendor, and I'll use those terms synonymously also, to see, really provide what, how we maximize your plan or make it more efficient. So we've, again, seen a lot of plans and discovered that most vendors out in the marketplace today are of very high quality. They have a great amount of resources, an abundance of tools, all the information you want to have on your plan, all of the technology, all of their websites are very good. But the problem is you've got to ask. So they're not just going to call you and say, hey, here are all the wonderful things we offer. You've actually got to ask. And that's really why we've created our team and this process at Jacob School and Company so we can provide those type of details and go to the vendors and pull out that information. During this step, we also want to explore any concerns or issues that you might have with this current plan provider or vendor, meaning are you not getting timely information from them when you request certain pieces of data? Is the data you're getting not accurate or is it not effective in trying to determine what you're looking for? An example of that would be you're trying to get participation data to see where you stand with your plan, meaning are we at 70 percent? of our employees participating 90%. Those are the kind of things you want to know so you can measure your goals to see if you're going to be on track or making your plan effective. Do they also help you with getting terminated employees off the plan? That's a big thing in the qualified plan world is making sure that you don't have participants, especially with smaller balances, staying on your plan because typically you're paying for them to have an account balance. So again, these are just some of the items I mentioned that really you've got to work with the vendor on to make sure your plan is running smoothly. And then lastly, in the the explore step, we really help with the plan sponsor to understand the values in in reviewing their plan objectives on an ongoing basis. Because Similar to as life changes, these objectives can certainly change. So initially, why you thought you had your plan in three years, five years may change. And so you want to have effective ways to benchmark the plan, not only related to the investments. I think that's what everyone focuses on, but also this plan structure that I've talked about a lot. Educational tools for participants. Again, you want to analyze their paychecks to really determine the impact of deferring into the plan will have and how that affects their lifestyle. Uh, There's a lot of industry tools and technology that we use to see where your plan is excelling and also where it may be deficient. So that's really the, the E in the process. And then the last step we'll focus on today is the, the C, which is compelled to act. So in this step, we are, seeing if there are plan changes or strategies that need to be implemented, we're going to compel you to act so you can make your plan run in a much more efficient and process oriented manner. So we're going to assume that we found some issues in the first two steps and that you need to take action and move forward. And typically plans and the ongoing management are the last things that an owner of a company, a CEO, a CFO, or an HR director are thinking of about. They have a long list of to-do items on any given day. And generally speaking, the retirement plan always hits the back burner. So part of what we're trying to do is bring it to the forefront because it is such an important piece of your employee benefits, but also take a lot of that heavy lifting off your plate. So if appropriate, this is where we assist you in going out into the marketplace and doing a benchmarking of the other vendors or the retirement plan providers, really to see how your plan stacks up. And that's not only from a cost standpoint, but also from a technology standpoint, an efficiency standpoint, where the reports you're going to receive, all of that data that you need to have on your plan easily accessible. And this is also really part of a a key part in the fiduciary process, which I'll touch on later in the next episode, 
uh, about fiduciary process and procedures, but benchmarking also sets a precedent for showing that you're looking at your plan on an ongoing basis, making sure that you are play, paying reasonable fees and that you put the plan in the best interest of your employees. And part of the compel is if we find a better solution for your plan, then again, we compel you to make that change that serves you and your participants in the most beneficial manner. Next in this process, we spend time with those vendors looking at your retirement plan and the allocation of your funds. So when we look at a plan, you'll have X assets in the plan and it'll be divided amongst all the various funds that you have invested. But what we're looking at is we want to determine, A, are those competitive funds from a fee and benchmarking standpoint, meaning are they reasonable cost? Are they staying in the top quartiles from a benchmarking standpoint? Because you want to make cer certain you're offering your participants, obviously, high-quality mutual funds. But we're also looking at the allocation mix. And as I referenced earlier, you know, all of this process is to make sure that you get or really the goal is to get those participants on track and having the right fund options is a major component of that. Certainly getting them to defer and at a level they need to is also another big piece. But I think funds get a lot of focus and while they're important, they're just a piece of the pie. But you want to make sure you have the most competitive uh, funds out there. And we're also, as I mentioned, looking at not only where the money's allocated, but where are the, the new money's flowing into which funds. So again, we can make sure that we're getting the best options for participants. Another key that I would say about fund selection, we get this question from time to time, is why don't you have any exotic or specialized funds in your retirement plan. So why don't you have precious metals or an energy sector fund or a pure uh, technology or steel fund or something like that? Well, my response is retirement plans are built for the most part for the masses, if you will. So it's not to say you can't customize your plan, but when you start adding specific exotic precious metal funds like that, you're not really running your plan in the best way for a broad audience. You don't want individuals in your plan to invest in these fund options and then realize they're much more aggressive than they thought they were. And then that causes problems because they're starting to take undue risk, which they weren't aware of. So that's just one of the examples of questions that come up Quite a bit. And then to wrap up, the C of Compel is if we are engaged to work with a company on their retirement plan, this is where we begin our one on one education process. And this is probably the thing that we value most about the process because we believe that education by far is the cornerstone of a successful retirement plan. Without educated employees about their retirement plan, you're going to have financially stressed employees. And if they're financially stressed, then they're not going to be very efficient at their jobs. So we have found after doing lots of plans, meeting with thousands of participants that when you meet with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and this can be done either in person, can be done over the phone, it can be done through Skype or other technologies, you have a much, much greater likelihood of them not only participating, but participating at a much higher level because they're understanding the discussion and you're really getting to learn about their personal situation. And they also pick a good asset allocation once you describe what the different funds are made up of and you show them the choices that are available to them so they can make a decision based on their situation, their family situation, instead of just painting a broad brush on everything. So when we have these individual one-on-one -on -one meetings, we do have several tools that help them understand the impact of saving for retirement, you know, how their paycheck is affected. Again, there's 
a lot of examples you can look up on the internet, but we have tools that look at their specific paycheck so they can understand, okay, 3% will impact me this way or 7% will impact me this way. We also talk, again, education is the focus about how loans can negatively impact their long-term savings, how a little bit can go a long way over time. You know, we get into deeper conversation of what piece of social security they'll be entitled to, how that will affect their retirement. So we're really spending a lot of time with them, which is different than a lot of processes I've seen out in the industry to get to know them, but also help them be in the best allocation and deferral uh, mechanism they can be in. And all of these items are important because they make your plan more competitive from a cost standpoint and more efficient, which if you can make your plan more cost efficient, that benefits everyone in the plan. So from the CEO down to the custodian, they're getting better pricing because you're having more participation, you're having diverse investment options. So it's very beneficial across the board. And I would wrap up this stuff by saying, in my opinion, education is really what separates the average plan from those that can become great, because that's really the difference in what is going to make your plan run so well. And with that, Carl, thank you very much for walking us through all of those different pieces, parts of the first part of this uh, secure entire explanation of what secure process is. You know, very rarely do I have people who ask me questions that I, I, I don't even have a clue. That was super insightful. So thank you very much for your thought leadership today. Absolutely. I hope it. Uh, hope others found it as uh, insightful and gained a little knowledge as you did. Wonderful. And stay tuned for part two of this podcast where we're going to talk about the U, R, and E of the secure process. So, Carl, for you and for your partner, uh, Russell, and everybody at JCC, uh, this is Matt Halloran, and we'll see you on the other side, side of the mic very soon. If you have not subscribed yet to the podcast, make sure you take a moment to click the subscribe now button below. And with that, we'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. The content is developed from sources believed to be providing accurate information. The information in this material is not intended as tax or legal advice. Please consult legal or tax professionals for specific information regarding your individual situation. The opinions expressed and material provided are for general information and should not be considered a solicitation for the purchase or sale of any security. Russell C. Jacobs III, Carl B. Coolidge, James Jacobs, and William Schwartz are registered representatives of and offer securities, investment advisory, and financial planning services through MML Investor Services, LLC, member SIPC, Supervisory Office, Jacksonville, Florida. Jacobs Coolidge & Company, LLC, is not a subsidiary or affiliate of MML Investor Services, LLC, or its affiliated companies. 